Hey everybody, uh, you know, I've been building a CyberDeck computer, which I think is a great project, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But one of the first things I did was I wanted to build my own keyboard, and I found this really neat project called the Played or Plaid keyboard. And you can see a picture here. This is the this is a GitHub um, picture of the Plaid keyboard. And there's a there's a great project, right? So you can see um, this is a small keyboard, and it'll fit in the Pelican case that I'll show you in a second. And I thought this would be perfect for my CyberDeck PC. I gotta tell you, I had the hardest time making this work. And so I decided to make this little video just to show everybody what I had to do to make this go. So first things first, this is the um, this is the product that I'm that I'm working on. And, and this is a um, this is a great you can see the um, you can see the the link here, dosher.com. And you know he made this you know kind of computer for the end of the world. And I thought the I thought it just looked really good, and also I thought you know what a what a really interesting product. And I'm going to do something different. So here's the here's the here's the the look I'm going for. Uh, you know he made something with like a with like an Ethernet port and some GPIOs. I'm actually going to make one that's really focused on software defined radios. I have I think by nine radios in the thing, and then. Also, storing information, uh, you know, I'm a long time computer person, many, many, many years, decades now, 30, 35 years. And, you know, one of the things that I thought was neat about this computer, you know, if you just want a computer, get a laptop or get a desktop, they're great. They're, you know, really, really well designed. But, you know, one of the things that this project got me to ask was, well, you know, what is a computer if there's no other world, right? What's a, what's a computer good for if there's no internet? What a, what a what an interesting question! What a fascinating question! So I started thinking about it, and I thought, well, the two things a computer can do if there's no internet is it can store a lot of information, right? You can put Wikipedia on these things. You can put you know the all, all thousands of books, tens of thousands of books, things like that. That's one thing that's really interesting. And then of course the other thing is you can give it a lot of radios, right? There's no way that a person can can reproduce a radio without electronics and so i just anyway that's 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 what i was interested in and you know, i've always got 10 hobbies going and this is something i thought was just really interesting so i started to um so i started to work on it so the first thing i did um uh, actually the first thing i did was build a new 3d printer because the you know the the, the pieces here were too big <laughs> for my current printer. So I ended up building a, a Voron 2.4, which is a really good printer, um, you know, open build kind of thing. I'm really happy with it. Uh, that's kind of beside the point. I want to talk about the keyboard today. So so the first thing I did for the keyboard is I had some key, some uh, circuit boards made, right? And you can see it was a couple years ago. It was two years ago. I made a CyberDeck, ordered 30 of them just for, just for kicks. And, um, you know, thought that was a really, a really neat kind of thing. You can see here's my... Uh, Here's my custom, um, you know, custom custom silk screen, um, and then I bought the parts for thirty, but I really just made two. So I made one that was kind of a regular-ish looking keyboard. And you see, these are mechanical keys. These are Cherry MX keys, which are which are probably the, they're the best in my opinion. I, I really like them. And you know, I made it with the numbers on top and down here, and, and you'll see I used a QMX to to burn it, so that that worked good. And then I I, learned, I built another one. That was more in the plaid um, world. So you know you have the no, the letter keys up here, and then when you push one of the function buttons, you get the the letter or the numbers, the numerals on the top. And so I built them both, and I got to tell you, what a pain in the neck! I had just so much trouble making this work that I decided to make a video to show everybody how I did it because I had so much trouble. So first things first, the documentation is actually terrific. There's this GitHub user HSGW. And you know, boy, have they done a good job. You know, there's good documents. There's good. Um, there's good Gerbers for the, for the circuit board. Good assembly instructions. Um, really, just a very nice, very nice job. I wonder if this person's Japanese because there's also Japanese uh, version. But I, I found this this really good. But man, I just had I just had some real trouble making it work. So I got the whole thing together, and here's what it looks like. So you can see here's the here's the. The assembled pieces. I've got all the keycaps on there, all the switches. I've got all the diodes for the switches. I've got a little Atmel 328P there, the resistors and stuff. Man, I could not make this thing work. And, the, and again, the instructions were good, but I just I couldn't make it go. And the first thing that you need to think about is you need to burn the bootloader on this Atmel 328P, and that's the first thing I had trouble with. So the first thing I did was I went and bought one of these. Um, 
one of these AT Tiny. Well, first thing I did was try to use AVR Dude, and you might be able to do it, but I sure couldn't figure it out. So then I bought one of these um, USB Tiny ISP AVRs. Again, I think this will work. I just couldn't figure out how to do it. I, I spent all this this energy trying to trying to figure it out. Couldn't do it. Uh, you can see here's my here's my version. Here's my um, AT Tiny. Could could couldn't figure out how to get the the bootloader to work. And then I found a really good website, and let me show it to you right here. Um, from this guy, algorist.co.uk, A-L-G-O-R-I-S-T.co.uk, how to burn the plague keyboard bootloader. And this really did it for me. This, this, re this really did work. And so he's got really good instructions. And, you know, I tell you, just like all this stuff, you know, when I start doing it, it doesn't seem that hard. And then it's just impossible for me to figure out. And then when I do figure it out, I'm like, oh, that was really, really easy. Basically, every software program is like that for me. <laughs> I'm not very good, but you know, you use Arduino, uh, the Arduino IDE, you use AVR Dude, which is a uh, interesting command line stuff, and then you use something called QMK, which which actually burns the key maps. And so he has a really good um, tutorial here, and he used an Arduino Nano, which I have, but I also dis but I decided to use an Arduino Uno. And so let me show you what that looks like. So here's my Arduino Uno, and I've got the correct jumpers on there, and you have to put a 10 nanofarad capacitor on there, but then these are ready to hook up to the keyboard. Um, here's what it looks like all hooked up, right? So actually pretty, pretty straightforward. There's, there's six wires and a capacitor, you know, no, no big deal. And, um, you know, for me to get that, to get that to work, I kind of had to use three sources and let me show you. So the three sources I use is I use the algorist, you know, his, his wiring diagram and, you know, this, this little thing in the lower right, this is the, uh, a two by three header on the keyboard itself. And then this is their nano. I use an Uno. Here's the Uno. Uh, pin out and then here's the schematic for the played keyboard and it's this is j2 here a v r i s p and so if you kind of if you kind of triangulate between those three you can figure out how to hook it up and you know it took about five minutes right it was no big deal with with these three pieces of of information so once you get all the hardware hooked up then you have to go to the programming. And, and like I said, I, I think you can probably make it work with the AVR dude command line um, natively, but I couldn't figure it out. And so what I ended up doing is I hooked up this Uno and then I fired up the Arduino ISP software. And the first thing I did was I added, you know, the bo a board manager. So let me make this bigger for you. I've added a board manager and I made this, this app mega index, right? So this, this, this package right here. Uh, Carlos EFR at Mega Master, and that allowed me to put the at Mega 328P in there. And let me show you the setup because it took me a, little, a couple of rounds. Again, I'm not very talented. So the board is an Arduino Uno. Port was COM5, and you can see it was just having to be. You know, you can you can plug it in and see what port what port shows up. And this was the key for me because when I tried to plug it into USB, I got like an unrecognized USB, and I didn't know how to talk to it with AVR Dude. Uh, this allows you to talk to the Arduino Uno on a COM port, no big deal. And then the programmer is the AVR ISP. And so then what I did was I burned this sketch onto the Arduino Nano. So let me or Arduino Uno, excuse me. And so let me just do that. I'm just going to burn it again. Compiling sketch. Um, it's already done, so it doesn't it won't do anything. Puts it in memory, and then now you're able to use the AVR Dude command line interface to talk to the Uno, which in turn talks to your keyboard. And for me, that was the key: is to get the is to get the um, uh, get get it started from this perspective. This was the key. So here I am. I've installed AVR Dude, which I gotta love Linux, right? Everything's got a funny name. Uh, Gini. Um, all, there's all kinds of funny names. So anyway, back to my Algorist tutorial. I've hooked up the hardware just fine. I've got a command prompt open. Um, now I'm ready to to burn it. So I'm just gonna copy this here. So this is the this is from that uh, from the Algorist website. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy it here, and then you know they've got. Uh, a USB um, port, right, for the cache, uh, the dash capital P. I'm going to use COM5, um, and uh, it's not going to work because I've already done it, but let me just show you how I did it. So this is COM5, and then if you hit go, by the way, I use the plaid uh, default.hex file, which I got from the algorithm website, so I didn't do a lot of thinking, and then it's also burning these fuses, which is apparently important, so you hear it tell it go, and it's going to go and... Um, possibly uh, actually work here hold on there we go so 
there it is. And like I said, it didn't, it didn't work, um, but the, but that's how I did it, right? So I hooked up the Uno, and then um, and then it got it moving, right? So then the the bootloader is burned, and I think the reason it didn't work is I've already burned the bootloader on all my devices. But this was the key for me to get going. Then now when I plug it in, I can actually work with Zodiac and and burn the the driver, and then I can use QMK to burn this burn the um, the key maps. So let me show you how that works. So here's ZA Diag, and what you do is you go to options and list all devices. And then it's going to show up. It's going to start out as unknown USB driver request failed. And so you're going to select it. You can see but now I have the plat. It's all burned in there and it's it's hid. What you want to do is you're going to find that unknown one and you're going to you're going to install lit where the heck is it? Lib USBK and we hit replace driver and it's going to burn a driver in there and then and then when you plug in your keyboard then you can you can talk to it with the QMK which actually burns the key map right so first step burn the BERT loader that was hard for me I had to use uh, ultimately use an Arduino and the Arduino um, IDE second thing is you use Zadiag ZA Diag to burn to install a driver and then you can kind of get down to business and burn your actual key map so let me show you what that looks like. So first things first, you need to install two pieces of software. One is QMK Emesis, and I'm using this on a Windows box. So if you're using it on a, on a Mac or on a Linux box, it'll probably be different, but I used it on a Windows box, QMK Emesis. And then I also installed this thing called QMK Toolbox. And there's two steps. So the first thing you do is you use QMK Emesis to compile your keyboard configuration, and then you use the QMK Toolbox to burn it to the Atmel device now that you've burned the bootloader and, and installed the driver. So uh, I just followed the instructions so you can write here. I used QMK setup, which is great, and then I used QMK compile. And what I did, let me just show you. So I did um, just to follow the instructions QMK compile dash KB, and then I used PLAID, P L A I D, uh, dash KM default. And what it did is it crunched away and it made a firmware for the standard played keyboard that um, that we're using, right? So you can see here it is working and it makes a uh, it makes what's called a hex file, a hexadecimal file that is the uh, that is the correct file for your keyboard. So there you go. It's all done. Just took a minute and you've got this DM9 records played default hex keyboard file, right? So that's, that's the file you need to burn. And then what you do is you need to put your keyboard into bootloader mode. I'll show you that in a second. And then you burn the, the, the file. So here it is the file. You can see I actually went and just, just selected this one that we just made. It happens to be in my user directory. And then you do re you hold down reset and then boot and then let go reset and then let go boot. And you can see it just it came up and it sees this um, lib USBK file and it's ready to flash. So here I'm going to do it. I'm going to flash it, and boom, here it is burning the keyboard map to my keyboard. And oh my gosh, it works great. It took me forever to make it work. Here I just did it for you in three minutes, but but you know ultimately it was like 50 wrong steps for me and you know three right steps. There you go. And now it works great. I unplug it. I plug it back in. It works just terrific. Uh, so let me show you one more thing, which is QMK has got a really terrific infrastructure for making your own key map. And of course, I did make my own key map because I made two different versions of keyboard. So this is uh, you know config.qmk.fm, and I, I here I've selected the the default played keyboard. There's a billion others you can use, and then you can just go and move around the the keys all you want. And then once you've when you know, once you've moved around the keys to your to your to your delight, you can download a JSON file. You can compile the JSON, or you can you can tell it to uh, you can download the JSON file and save it, so you can play around with it again. You can upload it to this and and work on it more. You can download a firmware; it'll download a uh, executable, and then you can burn it to the keyboard, just like I just showed you, right? So um, again, you know, it's one of those things for me. All software is like this, where it's impossible to get going, and I, I make a million missteps, and then once I finally done it, I'm like, wow, that should have taken like a minute and a half, and here it did. Um, and so I wanted to try to save you at least a little bit of time if you're having a similar project. And uh, stay tuned. I'm gonna. I think I'll put it on uh, Hackaday. But I really think this this concept of a of a computer for the end of the world is really neat. And again, my my concept is going to be different. 
um, than Mr. Back7.co. I thought I thought he just did a beautiful job of creating this, but mine's going to have a bunch of radios and a bunch of information on it. I've also created my own uh, custom battery, so I will I will show that in a different video. But here I go. Now I'm off and moving with a good keyboard, and thanks for your time. I hope this helps.